mean, this is the biggest rock star we've ever had here, so it's a big deal, and, and people are really excited, and I'm just excited to see um, kind of not only his presentation today, but then the thereafter of what comes away from this, where people take what he says in, and, and it builds what we're doing here even further. So, I mean, to have almost 400 people here for a Saturday morning um, at 9.30 is pretty incredible, so we're excited. So, welcome to the Prince Recovery Center. Welcome to uh, our major event of the year. We are honored to have Bruce Alexander come and share the uh, dislocation theory of addiction. Bruce Alexander. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. It's amazing what's going on here. What's going on is change. It's, it's that the old truths that, that have got us this far are, are not adequate, and, and they have to be modified. I read the big book on the train. It's alive, and it, and it is so full of intelligence. It's a bit like the Old Testament. That is to say, all the wisdom is there, but it's, it has to be adapted to its times. We're in the midst of an opioid epidemic, right? And people are, are dying in, in scary numbers, but it's not the whole story. Persistent problems of the modern world is the problem of addiction, and it's big. You know, we can do something about it, and, and you may think that that may seem strange. That even seems strange to me, actually. I mean, here I am, a little old grampy from Canada, and I, I'm, I'm standing up here telling you that we can do something about this enormous world problem, and, and I wouldn't have the courage to do that if there weren't an awful lot of other very smart people who are, whose work I'm drawing from. So, so how have we dealt with our addiction problems in the past? Well, we have an old story. The primary cause of our addiction problem, and really a lot of our other social problems, is addictive drugs. And the, the solution to the old problem is expert help. I'm, I'm going to try to convince you that the old story has to go. Number one is that there's a whole bunch of research which, which disproves it. But the real reason that the old story has to go is that it's, it's not getting us anywhere. The problem is growing. I have to tell you a legend. The, this legend comes from a, a native woman who was a drug addiction counselor. We drug addiction counselors sit by the side of the raging northern river, and every once in a while we see a head bobbing. There's someone out there in that river. And, and we leap into the river, and we swim, and we grab him, and we drag him into shore. And then we know that we are warriors, she said. Except some son of a bitch upstream keeps throwing more people in the stream every year. <laughs> That's the trouble with the old story. It's that son of a bitch upstream. You know, I want to lead up to the new story by telling you about Rat Park. How many of you have heard this phrase, Rat Park? Ah, oh, look, look, look. Thank you for making me happy. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the old story is not entirely accurate. Maybe we need something in addition to the old story. This is the way I was putting it in those days. And some of my students got all excited about that and said, well, yeah, yeah. And some of my students thought, got really mad at me. And he says, don't you know about the rats? There were in those days studies of rats in what were called Skinner boxes, which are boxes just somewhat larger than a rat with a, with a button on the wall. They can press the button and they get a little, a little shot of heroin. Maybe being for a rat to be in solitary confinement is not much different than for a person to be in solitary confinement. In other words, it's torture. So we built Rat Park and I, rats have everything they love like tin cans and <laughs> junk. I mean, they like that and they live, of course, socially. Then we test them to see how much addictive drugs they will take and we find it's way less, just way less. It's not none. Some rats like to party, I think. <laughs> but none are like the rats in solitary confinement where they take large amounts. And we did this experiment several times, and you can trust it. It's, it's been replicated. We know that that does happen. So the question is, why? And I went to the um, native villages of British Columbia, and many areas, because it's so remote, Many areas of the province were not colonized until the 20th century, even the mid-20th century. After they're forced onto reserves, um, often wind up with 100% addiction. That is to say, everybody in the village is either alcoholic or they're on the wagon or they're in AA. Maybe the old story isn't true. So I go around and study these guys and I, 
I ask them lots of questions, and because they have an or a tradition of oral history, they can not only tell me what their life is like, they can tell me what their grandfather's like, but they didn't have any, any mass addiction problems prior to colonization, and then after colonization, it was 100%. The, the psychological problems don't end just like that. Maybe people become addicted because their culture is broken down. Could that be a, a, a general, as general a story as the old story? The new story is a little more complicated, but it's, it's gonna get us somewhere. And, and here's my claim. I, I believe this to be true, that the new story will help us to deal with the kind of recovery that happens in places like this a little bit better. And the new story will help us to deal with the opioid crisis a lot better and that the new story has some hope of relieving us of this rising, this menacing, rising global tide of addiction, which is going to drown us. There's people all over the world who are, who are thinking in these directions. Society is fragmented, as it has been for the last 500 years of the modern era. Dislocation, in other words, radical social isolation, which is one form of dislocation, is torture. Addiction is, is to some extent a compensation for dislocation, a compensation, or we could say it's a substitute for a more complete life. So maybe that's how addiction comes about. Maybe that explains Rat Park, right? Maybe, maybe rats get dislocated, who knows? We, we will never know, they will never tell us. The third part of the news story is that treatment can only help addicted in individuals. In other words, treatment's a wonderful thing. Of course, people who are suffering need help, and of course, organizations like this and dozens of other kinds of treatment give people life, you know. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with treatment. Treatment is wonderful, but it cannot solve the rising tide problem because of the son of a bitch. That guy, <laughs> right, that guy is still upstream, and that guy is fragmentation. What, what can really solve the addiction problem is epical social change. And, and there, are, there are political scientists on the left and political scientists on the right, and they all agree that, that the current social situation is um, FUBAR. It's <laughs> <laughs> Most people's addictions are of relatively short duration. That is, most people get over being addicted. Some people don't. But most people do, and when people get over being addicted, it's, it's kind of served its purpose. It's kind of kept them from suicide or doing something, something even worse than addiction, and they get out of this loop. And that's, that's good. Addiction is um, not an all bad thing. Addiction can make society worse, and it does. So this is the dislocation theory of addiction, you see. It's a theory of addiction which puts it in a social context, which is kind of scary. It's also kind of helpful, many people are finding, that people understand their own addiction you know, a, a good deal better in this context, and they can think about it in, in ways which seem to me more productive, that this theory might be part of the solution. So, so what about this opioid crisis? What's, I mean, what's gonna stop people from dying? The logical thing is, of course, uh, harm reduction measures. There have to be more naloxone kits out there so that people can be rescued from their overdoses. There have to be ways that people can get, that addicted people can get, if they're not gonna go into an abstinence program, they have to have ways that they can get clean drugs without going out and buying fentanyl on the dark web or, or on the street. So safe injection sites are, are, are really powerful. You may not like harm reduction, um, it's more a Canadian thing and a European thing than it is an American thing, but you're gonna have to go that way. So what do we do about the opioid crisis? We can't get out of it by restricting prescriptions. I think we're gonna domesticate opioids. You know, we, we, we have made them terrifying, but they're not terrifying. Treatment is two things. One is it's, it's a kind of an algorithm or a, or a formula for getting out over an addiction problem, but for another thing, it's the gift of caring. Just the fact that somebody gives a shit. I mean, we don't need to torture people. If the people can't get over their addiction, they don't have to be tortured. They can still be loved and, and cared for. I think it's just as therapeutic to be in, in a social action group as it is to be in a, a recovery group. 
because the, the essence is the, is the solidarity that comes in the group. You achieve a function, you achieve an identity, you achieve a sense of purpose, you achieve a, a meaning, a sense of meaning. And I think that the new story is telling us that. So the new story, I think, gives us a slightly different direction. Perhaps it's a more politicized direction, but, but why wouldn't it be? What's wrong with that? All the treatment in the world is not going to solve the problem. It is not. You can give us all the money in the world, and we will happily take it, but we cannot treat our way out of this problem. We have to have a society which is organized, which is fit for sobriety. And, and how are we going to do that? Well, as I, as I tried to say earlier, I mean, I don't know. I, uh, I, I'm retired. Uh, <laughs> you guys with those young faces, it's going to be your task. And um, so I wish you good luck with that one. <laughs> Thank you all. <laughs>